Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets tutorial in Practical Sheets. Today we continue this complete course in the query function. And I think I'm going to get to the last lesson. And still, I won't know if you say it query or query. In Spanish, I say query. So you'll tell me. So what we're going to do today is see two other clauses that are not so common or commonly used that are limit and offset. They are not commonly used because they are not so needed, but in the specific cases you may need it. So it's good to know that they exist before we move to some advanced uses of query. It's good to know what it, all the things you can do in the basic level. So we're going to see the limit and the offset clauses. So again, let's do a simple query, just a copy. Let's just copy the, the database. So I'm going to say that we start in A and we're going up to, to J. That's it. Let's hit enter and we're having a dynamic copy of our table. So let's start with limit. I'm going to hit semicolon and just write limit 10. What do you think this means? Let's hit enter. So as it may be obvious with the name, limit 10, it limits our records to 10. And you can see that here I have 11 rows. Why? Because the, the headers, it's not counting as one of the 10. It starts in the first record and goes up until 10. So you say, why do you need only 10? Well, for example, if you want the 10 greatest uh, salesmen or the first, the 10 biggest sales or the 10 lowest prices or the 10 first sales. So by date, you know, so this really comes handy or really shines where we mix it up with, for example, the order by we saw in the last lesson. If I say order by D that is date in a descending order, what is the problem? The problem here is that order by has to be before limit. Remember that there's always an order of the clauses. So order by always comes before the limit. So here I'm ordered first, I'm ordering from the highest date to the lowest, and then I'm limiting to just 10. So here I'm just showing the last 10 sales. See, this is when it starts to get useful and, or, and then you can do aware. So let's recap the order of our clauses until now, select then where or where, if you are in the UK, then order and finally limit. Okay. And you can put limit here, 10 or two or 20 or a hundred or whatever you want. Okay. So this is the limit class. It just says how many records do I want to show? And then let, let's say we have, for example, limit 10 and remove this. I am going to put here that my header is just one. So when I put that my header is just one, it will leave the query queries smart enough. So when I didn't put that my header was one, you see that he didn't include, or the, the function didn't include this row, this empty row. But in many cases, we're going to have empty rows or rows we don't want because the, I don't know, the, the first is um, a mockup or is a sample data, dummy data, whatever. So this is where the next clause will come in handy. And it's called the offset function. The offset function tells my query, just jump and skip this, the, the first row or the first two or three or five rows. So I'll give it offset and just put it number one. And here I'm skipping the first row. In this case, it's an empty row. And if this Virginia says, no, this is not working for me, I'm going to remove the first Virginia because it's putting some noise in my data. So without having to delete it, I can say, let's offset it by two and I'm removing Virginia. So I can remove the first row, the first five rows. And even if I'm putting, for example, the order by, remember the order by, I, I set up that it was ordered by the descending, remember? So here I can remove, let's say, no, my, my, my last sale is too big. I don't want to include it. So I can include the offset to say, remove the first two biggest numbers to remove some of the bias or of the extreme values, for example. So this is where the offset clause comes handy and the offset comes after limit. 
So, final recap. First, and, and let's use it. Select. I'm going to select A, B, C. Then we're going to put where the amount that is F is greater than 1. Then we're going to order by D in a descending fashion. Then we're going to limit to the 10 last sales. And then we're going to remove the last two sales because I don't want the last day, for example, something like that. Hit enter and it works. We're using five different conditions. First, filtering by rows or selecting the rows with the select clause. Then filtering by some conditions with where clause. Then ordering by the columns I want with the order by clause. Then limiting how many rows I want to show with the limit clause. And finally, selecting if I want optionally, I can tell him to skip the first one, two, three, or 10 rows with the offset clause. So now we know five clauses and there are more to go that we'll see in the next lessons. So I hope you liked it. I hope you're learning a lot about this query function, starting to imagine the possibilities. And if you like it, then remember to subscribe to the channel, at least one video a week. And if you want more, if you want the videos, if you want videos earlier, if you want to have priority in your questions, if you want to access the templates, so you can go to the Patreon page and support me there. And make sure to stay tuned for the next lesson in the query course, because first we're going to see two other clauses, the format clause and the label clause that refer to formatting the data and the headers. And then is where the fun really begins, because we're going to look at special cases with dates and texts. And then we're going to see two final clauses that take query to to a next level. That is the group by clause and the pivot clause. This is where if you're not already impressed with query, these clauses is where you start to get impressed. So I hope you stay tuned for the next lessons of this course that should come in the following weeks. Thank you so much and see you next time.